This is a Thinx Canary. It is an awesome security appliance for trying to detect people who are snooping around on your network. And this is a $3 Wemos D1 Mini, and we're going to try to turn it into something to do the same thing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this thing is going to outperform the official Thinx Canary, but what it does do, it does very well. And the entire project only takes about 10 minutes, and this board, it's like three bucks. And so what we're going to do is we're going to upload a very simple sketch to it that is going to turn this thing into an FTP server. But it's not just any FTP server. It's a honeypot FTP server, which means that if someone gets on your network and they're browsing around and they see this thing, it's going to look like a real Synology FTP server. But when they try to access it, it's going to fire off this free thing called a canary token. And that canary token is going to notify you that some Someone is screwing around on your network. So before we get into all the nitty gritty about building the thing, let me show you the thing in action. So I've powered up the ESP board and I'm presented with the IP address and the MAC address. If I were to do a port scan of my network, this thing would actually just show up as a Synology and show me that port 21 is open because it's an FTP server. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to it like it's an FTP server and I'm going to put in admin and whatever password I want and hit connect and you'll see that we've actually connected to the FTP server. Now immediately I was told that a connection was made from this IP address and that it attempted the canary. Within just a couple of seconds I receive a notification that the canary has been triggered. I am told the source IP of where it was triggered. I get my token back. I get the reminder that I set when I created the token as well as the source IP and what is being called the user agent down here. Now what I did is I passed the IP address of the person who visited the FTP server in as the user agent so it would just show up conveniently in the Canary email. You can also come down here and manage the token. You can export all of the data as JSON or as a CSV and you can turn off notifications and things like that down here. Beyond that, there is a file in the actual FTP server that I uploaded, and if someone were to download it and say, take that file home, they would be rewarded with some API keys for Amazon and Slack. Now, if they were to take these home and to do some work and maybe try to access these AWS servers or the Slack API, then these keys would actually phone home and give me their home location of where they were trying to access this thing from. Now, one final thing is that this looks like a real FTP server. So if I were to try to upload a couple of things to it and upload these documents, it looks like they're going through and it looks like I'm able to store these things on the server. I get all the messages of success and all that. But if I were to refresh, they are not really there because this user doesn't have write access. And so that's basically what this thing does. Now I'm going to show you how to set it up. Okay, so I'm over here in the Arduino IDE and I could not be more excited for this because this is my first Arduino library. Now, I am not a C developer by any stretch of the imagination, but I am really excited about this. I'm excited to have this in the IDE. So all you have to do is come over here and type in ESP Canary. Or you can even type in ESPC and that should get you there. Um, and you will see that it is available right in here by me. And uh, it will be at least version 2.0.1 by the time you get it. But we're going to go ahead and install this. And then we will go and load the lonely single example sketch. And the reason why there's only one is because that's all you need. So we're going to go to the examples and scroll all the way down here to these libraries to ESP Canary and Simple Honeypot. Now, one of the things that makes this library kind of fun is that it doesn't care if you're running it on a typical ESP8266 or an ESP32. It will just run, and I worked pretty hard to make that happen. Uh, the first thing you can do here is you can set your MAC address if you'd like. There are tons of databases of MAC address prefixes online. And so if you were to come and look, I'm looking at a random GitHub repo, but you can see that like say 3com is 000103. You could come in here and change this to 0001 and then 03. 
and put whatever you want for your last couple of bits and that will make this thing look like a 3com device when it's on the network so once you do that you're going to want to put in your ssid and your password and then you have the option to generate a canary token now the way this thing works it can do one of two things it can either hit a pre-made token by the thinks canary people which is free or you can set up your own web hook and you could put something like your domain.com forward slash webhook dot let's just say php and whatever there and then you can pass your other parameters in there that you want um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the thinks canary one so let me show you how that works so i'm over here at canarytokens.org and what we want to do is generate a web bug slash url token and you're going to put your email address in here and then you can put a uh, just some kind of note to tell you what this is so you can say like esp canary is awesome like that and what's going to happen is when you get your email you're going to see that so if you have a dozen of these you can say that this is the one in the server room and the other one is in my house or whatever you want to do so anyway you're going to generate that token and it's going to give you a url so for the purpose of this video, so you guys aren't notifying me all the time, I uh, shortened the URL a little bit, but the, the essential thing is you just paste the URL in here and, uh, and that's all you need to do. Now, in terms of the FTP server, you have to decide how hard you want it to be to get into the server. So if you would like to use something that looks like you have default credentials, like admin and password, you can put that here. If you would like them to have to type the word admin, but you want any password to do, then you can just replace this with a percent symbol. And if you want literally any username and any password to work, then you can just replace them both with percent symbols. Now, these two things down here are, if you're using your own webhook let's just go back to that example here so let's say if you have your own webhook and you're doing webhook.php and then let's say you need something like code equals one two three four uh, and then you want to pass the ip address of the person who hacked you on the end of this then what you would do is normally that would look something like this you would do an ampersand and then you would do ip equals whatever but what we're going to do is if you come down here you can just change this to an ampersand and change this to true and what's going to happen is it's going to hit your webhook with the ip address on the end of the token for you so that's all optional but um once you get set past this point that's literally all you have to do there's nothing you have to worry about down here we take care of all of it for you you upload it to your esp8266 or your esp32 and you are good to go the last thing I want to talk about is, as I said earlier, this thing actually creates a read-only FTP server that you can legitimately download files from. Now, note I said read-only because I don't want a hacker to be able to put their own code on your server. That would be kind of lame. So we are going to use something called the Serial Peripheral Interface Flash File System, also known as SPIFFs. Now it's outside the scope of this video to explain how to set up and upload spiffs on your ESP8266 and your ESP32, but Rui Santos over at Random Nerd Tutorials is the freaking man, and he has done some thorough, detailed explanations of how to do that, and so I'm going to link to these two guides in the description to get you set up on that. But more importantly, is what would you want to put on that file system? So if you head back over to canarytokens.org, you can see that there's more than just the web bug token. There are um, images and there's Word documents and PDFs and all that kind of stuff, even QR codes. And what you can do is you can generate tokens in those things and put them on your FTP server and hope that whoever gets them doesn't actually try to open them on your network, but that they steal this PDF and download it. So if I were to come over here and generate this PDF, it would ask me for my email address and I'll do that. And I'm just gonna put IT credentials PDF and I'm gonna download that. So once you download that file, you're gonna to wanna to rename that something more enticing. So I'm gonna call that IT creds for guest devs, uh, yep, uh, PDF and we're gonna drag it over to our data folder for our uh, sketch, and then I'll upload it to Spiffs. Now, I highly recommend you put a couple different types of, of tokens in there. See if you don't get them on one, maybe you'll get them with a different one. It's just something to play around with. Again, none of this is foolproof, but the idea is that if someone's on your network, it's better to know than to not know. And so for three bucks, you can build yourself a little honeypot. And I hope you find this library helpful. I hope you find this video helpful, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.